As Trump struggles to stay focused and stay on message, as one of my guests does as well, Hillary is staying on top in the polls. The Real Clear Politics polling average has her up by six points. So the question is, will Trump's immigration shift make a difference? Well, let's bring in our panel here to weigh in. Richard Brodsky, that aforementioned guest, is a former Democrat at the New York State Assembly, now senior fellow at Demos, <laughs> professor at NYU, and so much more. Dominic Carter, of course, political journalist and author, and conservative strategist Bill O'Reilly, the good one. All right, my strategist friend, what the heck's he doing? In that, I, I it, it, long before Donald Trump ever came around, people have always pivoted from playing to a base in a primary and then in the general moving more to the middle. I get it. But he did such a scorched earth campaign on this very issue of immigration that you can't really just unwind the clock and pretend it never happened, can you? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's taking a huge risk. And, and I, again, I, I think it's too late for him. He's taking a huge risk. The, the upside is that, is that some people could buy it and, you know, uh, uh, the softer Trump and come on board. I don't, I don't think they're available, but they're obviously trying to do that. The big risk is that he could also lose his base. So for a guy that's already losing by whatever that real clear average was, and there was a poll out yesterday saying he was down 12, I think that yeah. Ipsos poll, he could also lose the base. So it's a, it's a real risk here. He could pick up a few points you know, towards the center, or he could lose what he's got on the right. And Don, though, to me, the one thing he always had, it's like when Christie was popular, was he was perceived back then that he was authentic. That when he said something, whether it was PC or not, hey, love me or hate me, but you know where I stand. I'll take it to the bank. He sounds like just another politician. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's the key phrase there. That's why I almost think it doesn't matter what's going to happen with the base. What matters is up in smoke goes the moderates and the independents. You are now no longer, he was the guy that wasn't politically correct. He told you the way it was. He wasn't a typical politician. He actually told us this in the beginning. I'll say what I have to do to win the primary and then we'll deal with after. He actually told us that. I think his campaign may very well on this one issue. There's been a lot leading up to it, but go up and smoke. It smokes. There's just no way. How can he survive this? He looks like another phony, pandering politician. I, I, first thing I want to say is that you never should have gone to O'Reilly first. <laughs> This is a no <laughs> gloating zone. Well, on Thursdays, by the way, it's, it's when I get uh, one on one tips in journals. Go ahead, Rick. Yes. <laughs> I'm marking on my schedule. Who are you asking? Yeah, look, he had no choice. <laughs> well, by the way, I, not to, he's the perfect guy to ask. He was a Republican who's now identified as a conservative, but also as a strategist. I don't get the strategy All right, of this. The strategy yeah. part I get, but he's gloating. Yeah, yeah, and he was gloating. The, I, I didn't I, know I, some gloating. And emotionally, you know in, very in, well. Inwardly. Yeah, yeah, okay. 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 The, he had no very choice. Perspective. He had no choice. The, 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 the direction of this campaign, as, as he has constructed it, was catastrophically unsuccessful. He's got to try. When you're about to get pushed off the edge of the plank, <laughs> you might as well jump. And the, 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 I don't think it's going to work. And I do think what it's going to, in practice, do is it's going to hurt the down ballot races. Because I don't think you're going to see the Trump purists switch over to Hillary. I think they're going to go, oh, I'm staying home. So you guys think, we don't know this yet, but with everything in this particular camp and campaign, it'll come out. You don't believe it's the new group that came on board who said, okay, this is a new message. Do you think it's more the math, the calendar, and the map that said, you got to do it? I mean, we're getting I, crushed. Well, I, I think that Trump is... For him to go along with it, it's different. Because there's always been voices telling him he should do different things. But for him to go along with it, is it because he believes in this new group? Or because he says, I got 74 days, what do I have to lose? Any consultant would have given him this advice, but he should have done it months ago. I think the reason he's listening now is because he's seen the abyss, as Hal Holbrook would say, in, in Wall Street. He's seen the Trump brand blow up in, in, uh, right in front of him. The brand he's built for 40 years is at risk now. Um, he's going to lose so badly. The great winner is going to get crushed on a national but, stage, well, and he's desperate to, to stop well, that. Well, so finally he's listening. Watch what happens. He's going to go back to the wall. Because he's not, he hasn't walked away from the wall. No. He's, he's walked not. away from the deportation. And he's going to go back and make a very strong 
wall speech to try to reclaim some of those And he kind of did that because he had border agents and others that were standing with him when he was talking about uh, enforcement along the the border, et cetera. The the, the thing, Richard, that that Richard mentioned about the gloating, I don't mean to gloat, but I I am pleased to, to see this play out because... You've heard you heard so much about, you know, politician, 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 typical politician. There's a reason that people in politics are the way they are. A lot of it has to do with the political consumer, the news media, the way things work. And Trump, after a year, 14 months of saying he was going to be different, is suddenly morphing and into I a politician. You, forget about what people at this table are saying. If you listen to right wing radio today, he's getting excoriated. The Ann Coulters who wrote a book in love of Donald Trump and have been his biggest <laughs> defender are saying, what are you doing? The Deeses, the others, the big names on the right are saying, we believed you. But Your Richard, economy. But Richard, let me ask you a and question. And my only point is, it, people whose issue number one, Dom, was, we're going to make this country back what I, it was. I you know what that really that, meant. But, well, yeah, you know, if nobody yeah. else knows what that means at this table, I know what that means. It's over. It was over three weeks ago. It's over today. You were apologizing and explaining why Trump was it's the, winning. It's not, it's not over. It's not over. Because, but, but the question I wanted to ask you and, until I was so rudely interrupted it's was, yeah. was it's TV. you know, I mean, and see, now you make me forget my question. Dom with the senior one. Well, a senior woman well, here. You know, there was another part of what he's done this week. And I believe, and I think we all agree, his statements on immigration weren't really for the Latinos because he knows he's not going to get that, that as a number. That was my question, Richard. It's for the white ladies. But, but, but do you think anybody really bought into what no. he was saying about immigration? Build a wall and we're going to make... make you, oh, did no. people no, really no, I believe, believe that? I believe I firmly people you believe that. people believe that? I believe it 100%. People, you think people believe we're going to round up all the immigrants? You've and, told me this before. You guys know it too. There's a portion of this country... And over the course of this summer, I've, I've had an opportunity to go to different parts of this country that I don't usually go, that really believe that he is the definition of the American success story. Right. That he is the guy who will get it all done. Forget know. about all the, the reality of the biography and everything else. The sizzle is more important than the substance here, and they believe it. So when he said he was going to build a wall, and not just any wall, the greatest wall ever, and he was going to get Mexico to pay for it, while it sounded like something that wouldn't even work as a skit on SNL, I done a wedding. People believe that. And they thought that he'd do it. To me, when he went from a genuine article, even though I never believed he was, to this, I think that it's, uh, he lost his greatest narrative, the free media part that when he says something media. Now everyone's going to ask him, why should we believe you now? You know, I, but here's my point. I thought, and he tried a little bit. and almost took your free advice in terms of where he was going to speak to black leaders and all the rest, okay? Um, there's a way, if he wants to, and he goes off prompter but actually has bullet points other than himself that he's talking about, that he could say, you know what? Here's why I did it, everybody. Um, I know at the end of the day, I'm not going to be able to deport 12 million people as much as I want to. The way Washington is, I can't. But I'm going to make you safer than any other president in the history of this country. I'm going to build a wall along that thing. And you know what? Any crook uh, immigrants, we're going to throw them out here. Forget due process. It says all that think, stuff. For, for, Talk about the black audience like, like, he, like he cares, not from some you know, and, and white st- country club in Florida. And, and, and instead of backhand slapping yeah. the black community. All you people. You know, you <laughs> yes. can't. Right. But, but, two, but two things. 60% of the people who come into the country illegally come by plane. They go over the wall and land. The other You're thing, like I, facts can is a good story, though. Bill. Right, exactly. <laughs> and, and but I, I had a drink this week with some with a former member of the Trump campaign who was an early PR person who was the person who developed the wall, the idea of the wall. And the reason they did that was because all Donald Trump wanted to talk about was himself as a developer and a builder. And so they said, well, if you're going to um, emphasize being a builder, build the wall. That's, That's how that started. Interesting. That's a how lot it started. Of the focus on Trump or on the, the, the intricacies of his policies or his politics missed the point. Trump was successful because the Republican Party electorate, the, the, the people who vote in primaries, are crazy. <laughs> and the, 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 if you go back to January and February... Let me when try it, and parse what you really when, mean. When, <laughs> yeah, ahead, yeah. when, when he was... Wait, not all of primary. them, not all of them, but 40 to 50 percent of them. And when way, he was you're a, doing exactly what Dominic does to you that drives you literally yeah, Vesuvius about the legislature. I learned, about the I learned yeah. the feet of a master. Yeah. You do. But right, go back to January and February yeah. when he was predicting Trump's immediate demise. I was. And, and he, why he was wrong wasn't because he misanalyzed Trump, 
He got Trump correct from the get-go. He misunderstood the You're voter. An object, by the way. He, yes. he, 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 what was your name again? <laughs> he misunderstood the voter. And the real failure of the Trump campaign that they're trying to correct now is they ran a successful campaign for the Republican electorate, yeah. and then they had a shift to a general electorate. But the problem is what he said what in the primary. Now, now you still talked not to over. Still not okay. over. Okay, <laughs> I, I got the daily caveat. I got you. Um, okay, what you guys talked about is the electorate. I got questions about the electorate and how, when they get into that booth, whether they're pulling the curtain or they're pull, popping a chat or they're doing the whatever, are they voting by individual or party line? We're going to talk about that because the Trump effect could be felt all the way down the ticket. Recent numbers are right now, the Democrats, the odds on favor to take the Senate back. Well, we're gonna talk about whether or not we think the electorate and how they think that way coming up.